Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on Community Profile Analysis, as made for MIMG109BL at UCLA. This second video is on Taxonomic Profiles and STAMP. By the end of this video, the student will be performing statistically supported taxonomic community profile analysis using STAMP. The student will understand the relationship between the community profile and its metadata, as well as be able to create publication quality figures with statistical support and biological relevance. STAMP stands for Statistical Analysis of Metagenomic Profiles, and it is a software package that allows for the biologically relevant statistical analysis of taxonomic and functional profiles. The power of STAMP comes in its ability to quantitatively analyze high volume sequencing information in a relatively short amount of time, and its ability to create graphs and figures to support such analyses. In order to start your STAMP analysis, first you need a profile. This stamp-ready profile is similar to an OTU table, but has been modified slightly to fit the requirements dictated by STAMP software. It's been previously mentioned that an OTU table must have its taxonomic classification organized in a hierarchical tree structure, but this is most important when looking at a stamp-ready profile. The profile file example you see before you exhibits this proper structure that is necessary for STAMP software. Notice within the phylum proteobacteria, there exists four classes, alpha proteobacteria, beta proteobacteria, gamma proteobacteria, and delta proteobacteria that do not exist within any other phylum within the sample. Notice how alpha proteobacteria contains two possible orders, sphingomonadales and rhizobiales, that do not exist in any other class within the phylum proteobacteria or any other phylum as well. Once you know that your profile exhibits this structure, you can save it as a tab delimited text file for stamp. The next input you need for your stamp analysis is the metadata file. The metadata file dictates how stamp will organize your samples into specific groups for statistical analyses. The metadata must be formatted as such. The first column must have the header sample ID and its contents must correspond to the sample IDs in your profile file. The subsequent columns are up to you. You describe the header and using those headers you can describe what groups your samples belong into. Notice how all of these uh, samples here belong to winter 2016 in the category collection quarter. The metadata file is how you will describe biological information to your taxonomic data. So you can organize your samples according to the pH from which they came from or how much moisture was in that plot or sample. Just realize that for stamp Describing categories such as high, medium, or low, or 1 to 5, 6 to 10, may be more helpful than giving discrete numbers for this metadata file. Once you are ready, you can save this as a tab delimited text file for stamp. Here are some examples of the plots that you can generate using stamp. You can use an extended error bar plot to discuss what specific members are contributing to the community in profound and novel ways. You can use a heat map plot to discuss what similarities between environments determine the composition of the communities found within those environments. And you can also look at a PCA to discuss if there are any significant patterns or trends that relate the community to larger concepts in ecology and diversity. Using STEM software, you can analyze your profile in one of three levels. At the two sample level, you can do a direct analysis between two communities. Notice that this is the only level in which you do not need to input a metadata file for your analysis. At the two group level, you can analyze multiple samples binned into two groups, as defined by your metadata, and at the multiple groups level, you can analyze more than two groups, or you can look at your sample as a whole. 
Now it's your turn. Think about which questions you can ask for each level of analysis. Okay, so let's get started. First, open up your version of Stamp software. This is the graphical user interface for Stamp. First, go to File, then Load Data, then select the proper profile and metadata files for your analysis. Know that Stamp doesn't read Excel files, but can only read TXT files. Stamp might take some time to calculate statistics for your analysis. Once it's ready, you'll see your figure in the central plot window. You'll see the options for your legend to the right and your metadata table towards the bottom. Notice on the left properties panel that you can change the profile level to perform analyses at different resolutions. You can go all the way down to the species level if your data allows, but remind yourself of the inherent limitations of performing such an analysis. Towards the right, you can change the group field to perform analyses according to the groups defined in the metadata. This is how you will be ascribing biological information to these taxonomic profiles for each sample community. As a tip, when you're exploring your data, you can click on the points within the plot to get a description of what that point might indicate. Back towards the Properties panel, you can use these tabs to switch over to different levels of statistical analysis. Towards the bottom of the main plot window, you can select different ways of visualizing your data according to the questions you might want to ask. Take this time not only to explore your data, but also to explore what ways you can present your data in a way that fits your research narrative. This video has only shown you the tip of the iceberg of what STAMP is capable of doing. Take this time to explore your data, generate cool graphs, but most importantly ask questions about the statistical significance and biological relevance of the work that you are doing. Before I conclude this video, I leave you with some considerations. First. How do you distinguish between statistical significance and biological relevance using STAMP software? Consider what features should you use in your metadata to test your hypotheses that are relevant to your research narrative. Also, what types of figures would best address your hypotheses for their culture-independent analysis? And when you generate these on STAMP, are those figures publishable? Just some reminders. Remember to report the p-value for your statistical analysis. Your p-value is a measure of the statistical significance of your figure. Also, we highly recommend to not screenshot your figure. Use Control w and save your figure as a high-quality image that you can use for your future posters and presentations. Also, please cite the following article for any published material using stamp figures. Thank you.